and go like that. This guy, this guy, my DMG, my guy. I just love Michael fucking Feely. Man, I, I suffer from Tourette's. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I suffer from the F-bomb Tourette's. <clears throat> I love Michael. I've got all his books. Uh, he's an educator. He's a teacher. He's a speaker. He's an author. Uh, he's uh, just a great guy in, uh, you know, just in general. Got a, you know, wonderful series going on on Iconic with David Icke. Uh, doing, uh, you know, some wonderful work. And, uh, you know, Mike and I, we've been working together for years now. Right. Uh, that is uh, nice to say that we've been working together for years and I've learned so much for Michael. And as you guys have as well, because I know a lot of you guys love Michael every time he's up, you guys are just all over his videos. So uh, thank you. Thank you, my guy, my DMG, dude, man, guy, Michael Feely. I appreciate you, brother. Thank you for coming on and uh, once again, sharing your uh, wisdom and knowledge with us. Thank you. I thought you were going to say I'm your stan, your number one fan then for a moment. But uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's nice to see you again. Uh, you're looking well. Thank, thank, thanks for inviting me here. Thank you, brother. Thank you. So uh, I'll give you a half hour. And then uh, after that, I'm sure everyone's going to have some questions for you. So guys, uh, post those questions in cap locks if you can. Uh, it makes it easier to uh, stand out. And then, uh, Mike, I'll just jump in there in about a half an hour and I'll hit you up with some uh, questions. Okay, what I was going to do is, is uh, do a short presentation, which will include a, a whiteboard. And then at the conclusion of that, I'll just, just open it to the floor and see what happens. But cool, you, brother. Cool. again, Earth Day, you know, really, I, I looked into what Earth Day is. And one of the definitions was basically to teach people and make people view and see things differently. And Earth's history would be included in that. <clears throat> And it is really that the lower mind that is behaving the way it behaves. You know, Earth is really being run as a business and it's been destroyed. And it's only the lower mind that behaves that way. The more people that we can transform into a higher mind, the less they will behave in this chaotic, destructive way. So that really is, is part of my task really in order to try and bring people up in vibration in knowledge and in wisdom and it has always been the idea to to escape the lower mind which is exactly what I'm, I'm, I'm trying to do so let's look at creation and how we got here really the singular essence had a thought and that thought was to experience itself to understand what it is to be, to understand what creation is, because you can't be perfect unless you've had experience. So it fragmented itself, but before it did, it did that, it created vector space. Now, if Einstein had actually given us the full equation rather than half the equation, then the world of physics would be a different place than it is now. Had he given us the full equation, then we would have gone into vector space, which is really rotational spheres. Now these rotational spheres, almost like tornadoes, create sound and sound waves. And it is those sound waves that became of the word. Because you speak things into existence, you manifest things through the power of your voice. And the sound of that voice goes through the airwaves and creates what we believe to be a physical world. So every shape has a sound and every sound is a shape. Now, when we look at the, the breath of God, which is the Holy Spirit, the, the breath of the creator, we give and we shall receive, which is basically to inhale and to exhale. We become in sync with this Holy Spirit. The Egyptians told us in the Sphinx that we are out of sync with the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is breathed into the nostrils. Now you will notice that the Egyptian Sphinx and, and many Egyptian statues have no nose. That's because they are telling us that we have misaligned ourselves with this Holy Spirit, this divine breath or this divine circulation of breath. Biblically, this is described in the character Jesus because the word Jesus means divine breath or the circulation of divine breath. So we are in sync 
we are exhaling we are inhaling with the creative force okay. now the word conspiracy means to breathe as one so if we are called a conspiracy theorist which we often are in in this arena what it's really saying or, or what they're really telling us that we are breathing as one with the holy spirit with the creative force so it's actually a positive thing to say rather than a negative one but because they're so ignorant as to the words they speak they don't understand what they're saying so say thank you next time that you call a conspiracy theory so what i'm going to do now i'm just going to just change slightly position and i'm going to go into creation on this board now i hope you can see it it's a busy board but if you can't i'm just going to describe what it is so the third dimensional world is created from fourth dimensional spin and that spin creates the toroid which is what i was talking about about vector space now when the energy of that spin falls through the center of the toroid it spins faster and faster and becomes harder and harder so what we have as, as three-dimensional solidity or the belief of three-dimensional solidity is from fourth dimensional spin becoming hardened into our reality now when this energy actually falls through the center of the toroid it creates the tetrahedron so the tetrahedron is really the first many first manifestation of divinity in the third dimension as you can see there now the cube of the pyramid is a, a, a cubic base which is really the number 10 one two three and four which equals 10. now when you look at the pyramid from an aerial view it is the letter x okay so when you get the 10 of the cubic base plus the x you get 20 which gives us the code 33 which is the resurrection code so the pyramid is really a code for the return to the cosmic womb where we are able to escape the mater x the matrix now xx is also the female chromosome when you reverse the alphabet so z becomes one y becomes two x becomes three so xx is 33 that is the code 33 basically the resurrection code that is when we're told that this character christ resurrected now when we start looking at two axes together then we start to get the masonic square and compass and in the center of that square and compass we have a diamond and the diamond is really the conscious fusion of opposites in this case the male and female because the top of the the double x is w and the bottom of the the double x is m which is woman and is man so we have the union of opposites the balance that we must achieve and we must attain in order to reach that resurrection code now when we look at earth the word for earth really is pandora and not gaia gaia is actually earth's ecliptic but pandora means the gift of all now george lucas is telling us this in his, his movies avatar because humans go to planet pandora and pretty much destroy the planet and cause war on the planet and cause destruction on the planet for what they believe to be a precious metal now what he's really telling us is that that is what humans are doing to planet earth we are destroying it we are causing wars for things materialistic things that we believe are of value what we need to do on the, on the planet going back to the conscious fusion of opposites is to create balance to create a masculine feminine balance and when we look at the left eye of horus which was lost in battle the loss the the the, the, the loss of the left eye is really symbolically telling us the loss of the feminine now when biblically we translate the world of sin the world of sin is really the left hand path now the left hand path is the path of the feminine the moon the word sin gives us sinister 
Now, originally, the word sinister meant lunar wisdom. So those with lunar wisdom, which is the feminine path, which is the feminine, the female, had to be eradicated in order for this patriarchal system that we still have today to take over and to take control. So they created the right-hand path, the masculine, the sun, which is the Christ. And Christ came to eradicate sin. So the sun cults removed the lunar cults. The sun cults, the patriarch cults, removed the matriarch. And that is why we have everything in society today is run by the masculine. Whether it's politics, whether it's religion, whether it's society, it is run by man. Because they wanted to eradicate sin, which was the feminine path. And that is exactly what they've done. And in doing so, they have created an imbalance. Because you need 50-50 in order to reach that place of equilibrium. And you can't do that if your feminine side has been eradicated through false teachings. So that really is what the biblical sin, original sin, really means. That these patriarchs wanted to remove the feminine in order to take control of the world, which is what they've done. So this conscious fusion is important if we want to become true Christians. Now, a Christian is not what it is purported to be today. People believe that a Christian is you go to Sunday service, you read scriptures of the Bible, and you become part of that religion, and you become a Christian. Christianity was once a secret society. They met in secret, they gave secret symbols, and they didn't speak or didn't utter anything above their own voice until it was accepted as a state religion. But it was a secret society. Now, to, to be a Christian means to become a Christified being. And to become a Christified being means that you have to amalgamate your opposites. Now, the symbol of being a Christified being or a Syrified in Egypt was the cross. So those who wore a cross were marking almost an emblem, a badge of honour, that they had become Christified. That, of course, has been completely watered down in today's society when everybody can wear a cross completely emptily for, for, for no reason. So really, my, my talk is, is, is telling us about how we can raise our consciousness from a lower mind to a higher mind. It is the higher mind that doesn't behave the way in which the lower mind works. It is the lower mind that is destroying the planet. It is the lower mind that we need to surmount. And the previous speaker was talking about we've already won. Yes, we have. We're just pretty much acting out the scene before the end credits arrive. But people are playing this game for real. And unless they play it for real, it has no relevance. It has no value. And the creator will at some point defrag and everyone will return back to that singular essence once again. All is sound. Creation is sound. Dimensions are sound timelines are sound and if you align yourself to a different frequency to a different vibration that matches to a higher dimension you will be in that dimension if you do the same with your timelines you will be in a different timeline and when we see things that are supposedly meant to happen in the world when they do not happen it's because we've changed the timeline we have changed the future if you imagine that we live almost as organic computers, where sound, which also creates numbers, creates a reality that we decipher into an image, just the way a computer would, if you put a disk into a computer, which, which has binary code, it gives you an image because it reads that binary code. We are pretty much the same in terms of the numbers that are vibrations that are part of creation in the universal language, we decipher them and we interpret them and we get a reality from that interpretation and i know this for a fact because i've looked at the sky and i've seen clouds turn into numbers and i have other different evidences that, that prove to me that this is how it is but in order to become our, our fulfilled creators again in order to become the higher consciousness again we need to change our ways we need to change our perspective we need to begin to behave differently. We need to begin to expose the secret knowledge 
that was hidden and it was kept from us. Our rightful inheritance has always been kept from us because knowledge has always been the property of the wise and we need to become wise in order to regain that property. So thank you very much for listening to this short presentation. Again, I will open the room up to any questions or just a general chat uh, with, with the hosts. So thank you very much for listening. Nice, my guy. That was uh, that was wonderful. Really liked it. Um, where did sound come from, Mike? Sound comes from rotating spheres, which is vector space. When when you look at vector space, you are looking at lines. You are looking at dots. You are looking at grids. You are looking at basically rotating spheres that create sound waves, mm -hmm. and it's from those sound waves that shape begins to form dimensions begin to form stars begin to form and go an exact distance they need to be away from each other and planets are formed human bodies are formed and so on and so on and so on so it's really the spin of rotating vectors that create sound waves which which cre which create the reality that we know mm, the reality that we know as well uh, you mentioned, uh, you know, our lower consciousness is um, is what's creating, you know, the shit show that we're seeing here on the planet right now. Is that like a, a collective thought that we're observing all of this into place? And if we just changed our way of thinking war and disease and famine and all of this stuff that exists on this planet right now currently as we speak would you know disappear right if we you know brought in our higher consciousness so to say what we have at the moment is an accepted reality mm -hmm. and because again when the previous talk was, was speaking about grids and, and, and different things you know that I've just said about the, the, the matrix, the matter X, when, when we come into this world, we are trapped in this negative grid. And this negative grid, which is to keep us there by pulsating what is a negative energy, a negative mm -hmm. vibration. And it seems that a large proportion of, of humanity is actually connected to this false grid. And a lot of the thoughts that we believe are ours come from the world of ideas. So basically it's this database that we believe to be our thoughts, which are not always our thoughts. If people begin to behave differently, if people begin to think differently, which, you know, a thought is the beginning of, of, of kind of anything. You think about a behavior before you commit to behavior, you know, think about something before you speak. So a thought, as, it, as with the creative process, a fort or toth of Egypt is what you do first before you do anything else. Mm -hmm. A higher mind doesn't need laws. A higher mind has its own moral compass. It understands what it should and should not be doing, what it should and should not be saying. So it is not the higher mind that is the problem. The, the death and destruction and the way in which the planet is run at the moment stems from the lower mind, the materialistic mind, the satanic consciousness, which is really the law of matter, and the dark element of self. Our shadow self is, is this character that was created that we call Satan. So when we begin to think correctly, and when we begin to raise our thought vibration, then we begin to treat the world and the earth better than we are. We begin to treat each other better than we have. And when we get to that stage, our problems will dissipate. Mm -hmm. But when you have people who are acting from their animal instinct, which again, what is the, the Sphinx of Egypt is telling us, you know, that the, the lower half of the Sphinx of Egypt is the, the animal state and the top half of the, of the Sphinx is the divine state. So there are really two species of human on earth, which is the beast man and the God man. And when we make that tra transition from one to the other, then a lot of these problems will dissipate because the higher mind would not create such problems. Mm -hmm. The higher mind would 
do things differently. The higher mind would think differently. And as you know, it's like I always say, I, I don't need earthly laws as my moral compass to tell me what I can and can't do, what is right and what is wrong. Mm -hmm. I know because that is operating from a higher mind. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it would, it would alleviate a lot of our problems if humanity, if you are able to lift you know, the, the mindset and the consciousness of, of, of the masses. Mm -hmm. And that's really is the uh, challenge that uh, we're confronted with, isn't it, Mike, is to uh, get people to move from that lower conscious thinking into higher conscious thinking and remove them from that materialistic, uh, you know, aspect of their life, right? He who has the most wins at the end type of uh, mentality is what we need to rub out. How do we do that, right? Like that seems to be the our biggest challenge because if we can overcome that, right, mm. then we win, right? So how 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 do we do that, Mike? Like how do we snap somebody, you know, out of their, you know, program? Well, we either do it gently and and drip feed them, <laughs> or they're going to have an almighty shock, <laughs> and I would suspect that it may be the latter. Because let, let's flip the coin the other, the other way, the other side. You know, we, we spend so much time doing these shows, doing these conferences, having lots and lots of people coming onto these shows saying, we need this to happen. And yet people are ignorant and stubbornly not changing. And they're, and they're maintaining their destructive routine. So maybe they just need that to stop quite quickly <laughs> uh, and, and i think that that is is going to happen so looking at the other side of the coin just ask yourself why should the likes of me you your viewers tonight your other speakers who are putting in the effort who are trying who are trying to better ourselves who are trying to better the world a better society why should we continue to be held back by the ones who are not willing to do that. Mm -hmm. So you then start to have, and, and, I'm, and I'm physically seeing this on a daily basis now, you are beginning to have that consciousness shift, which is appearing like a Grand Canyon of a schism in between the old world and the new world. Mm -hmm. And that the people who are of a vibratory compatibility with the new world will be leaving the old world. Not that it doesn't mean to say you're packing a suitcase and sandwiches and, and, and elevating somewhere, but you can actually live a reality within a reality. And we are creating our own world of a, of a better and a higher vibration and leaving the negative grid matrix behind us. Is it um, the new earth that we're approaching, Mike, or is it the new human that uh, that we're moving into because you know the old human right is attached to materialistic things and thinks that death is real and that this physical body is it and the new human is thinking radically different understands that there's more to it than just this physical body and so on and so on so what do you think is it the new earth or is it a new human or is it a little bit of combination of both because of our you know space and trajectory in space and kind of what have you. Yeah. When, when you look at ancient codings within the Great Pyramid, they mention the year 2001 of our time, mm -hmm. which was going to be when this ancient knowledge, which was time capsuled, was going to be re-emerged into mm -hmm. the world. It also speaks of a seventh civilization. The seventh civilization are basically the light bearers of humanity those who have the knowledge and have the wisdom with good intent and they will basically take over from the sixth civilization which is the Adamic generation which is the mess that we're in now mm -hmm. so it is mentioned that there will be this transition to a new human people have said to, to me before to taking it in it taking that macro into a micro and people have said to me in, before about the UK how we need common law courts and we need to build new courts for, for, for the legal system and, I, and i've said to them in the same way we already have the courts we just need to use them correctly 
Mm -hmm. It's the same as we already have the planet. We just need to treat it correctly in the correct vibration with the correct mindset of good. Mm -hmm. So we already have the facilities within us, what we exist on, in order to make it work and to transition into something else, which is a new human on a new earth, because it will be a new perspective, a new perception, a new vibration that we mm -hmm. will fit into. E everything in creation, every geometric shape has to have a higher, one higher dimension than its shape. So right. w w when I, when I cast a shadow, that shadow is a two dimensional shadow, mm -hmm. which is coming from a three dimensional being, which is me. Oh, so it, it loses one dimension in its projection. Mm -hmm. now, that pen is a two dimensional shape. Now, if it was in the two dimensional only, I would only be able to move it in two dimensional directions. The very fact that I can move that pen in three dimensional dimensions means that it exists in a dimension higher than its shape. Mm -hmm. So there is a dimension. Like yeah. So, so we have a dimension higher than us for us to fit into. Mm -hmm. I see. I see. You need to have a space to go to essentially you do you do you, yeah you, you, yeah, you, yeah, always, you, you yeah. can never evolve you can never expand mm -hmm. um, you would always be stuck in the perimeters of the dimension that you're in so yeah. you have to have a dimension higher in order to fit into to expand mm -hmm. that makes sense so it kind of takes me into like that 5d thinking that i had uh, earlier that I was asking Susanna, or was it Susanna? I think it was Angie that I was asking about uh, becoming self-aware. When you become self-aware of yourself, right, would that mean that you're operating in a higher dimension than the one that you're currently in? Because now you've become self-aware and your connection to consciousness is, you know, gotten much higher. It's a more clear telephone call, so to say, right? Then your is, basic default yeah. connection yeah but but if you imagine humanity it, uh, in general mm -hmm. you know we are we are out of tune mm -hmm. so when we retune ourselves, you know like like the the neck of a guitar then you start to become more in alignment with all of the octaves and the chords of the neck of that guitar mm -hmm. so when you start to begin to have this kind of self-awareness of what you are and what your position is and where you're going back to that in itself is a higher plane than those who just think that the material world is all there is. Mm -hmm. Because what you're really describing is si simple ignorance and complex ignorance. Simple ignorance is you don't know anything. Complex ignorance is really ignorance of ignorance, which is, which is basically, I believe that the physicality is all there ever is. That is complex ignorance. Mm -hmm. Now, when you start stepping outside of that ignorance and you begin to know what you really are, then you are operating from a higher mind, from a higher vibration, from a higher plane or a higher mm -hmm. dimension. We are already operating in the fourth. We are nipping in and out of other dimensions. You know, we are multilocational. We are multiple awareness. And our awareness can shift from here to there to there to there. But we only have awareness of one awareness. So we can go from any dimension that we want from any position. If I was to say to you, I'll meet you uh, in Toronto by Sutton Sus building at 3 p.m. your time tomorrow. Now, that is a fourth dimensional coordinate. Mm -hmm. So we're already operating in the fourth dimension every day. Oh, I see. Moment by moment, in fact. Right, because the next decision hasn't been made or it's being made and it needs to be facilitated. I see what you're saying, Mike. I, see, I get it now. If you, if you imagine the now is really the processor. Mm -hmm. And if we remember, we are traveling back to the past. Mm -hmm. If we visualize, we are traveling to the future. And the processor is now. And if whichever way we dream, whichever way we wish to go, we're either in the past or we're in the future. But the future is being processed now mm -hmm. based on what we visualize, 
the word becomes flesh. We manifest our reality, our future. Profound. That is profound. Let me bring Stone Hobbit up because I see her nodding her head up and down and resonating with what we are uh, talking about here. Uh, Stone, Stone, let me hear uh, some of your thoughts, sister. Hi there, Michael. Good to see you again. Yes. Um, okay. Here's one for you. Um, I was having one of my out-of-body experiences where I went into another dimension and while I was there in that dimension, I was being chased. As I came back into this dimension here, I was able to sit upright, look at the wall, and as I looked at the wall, it opened up and there was a light on one side of it away from me and a being stepped through. And as the being stepped through, it became a sh it, it appeared as a shadow being. What I learned from that was that there was a, a play on light of between the dimensions and stuff. So because of frequency. So how would you go about explaining that one? Future, past, present? <laughs> well, the, the, the thing is the, the, the present, the past and the future is the same thing. Yeah. And we, we believe that, you know, we look at history and we look at different things and it, it happened then and it, it's it's finished now and it, it's not. And again, I've, I've got my own personal evidence to, to prove that to me. You know, it is all in the same place. It's the same thing. When going back onto a shadow, we'll, we'll lose our dimension in projection. Yeah. If I cast a two-dimensional shadow as a three-dimensional being, then the shadow people that I've seen, which are three-dimensional shadows, are a fourth-dimensional being. Because, again, yeah. that is that is lost one dimension in its projection. The, these, again, you know, you have so many doorways, so many dimensions. My, my father's mansion has many rooms. That there are so many different pockets of space in which you can occupy and fit into. You know, when, when you lose this physical body, you are going into the space between worlds. So it yeah. is a different reality, but it, it, it runs parallel to ours in which you can nip in and out. You can nip in and out of anywhere you want at any given time if you align yourself to the frequency of that place. So, yes, you know, and, and going back to what I was saying to Omar, we are multilocational. And we yes. are a multi-consciousness, we are multi-dimensional, but our awareness is usually only in one place. And when we have the likes of an out-of-body experience or a dream or we, we pass away, you know, our awareness shifts from here and it goes somewhere yeah. else. You know, when, when we are in bed at night and we are asleep at night, unless you have an out-of-body experience or a near-death experience or a like, you have no awareness in your dream time that you exist because your awareness is not here, your awareness is somewhere else. And at the moment that you wake up, your awareness is back in the room and you're now back in this reality, but you have no awareness of where you've been in that time. And again, you know, my own experiences, my own, <clears throat> I have enough evidence to, 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 to prove to me, which is quite a high threshold uh, to, to, to prove to me that we can do you know spiritual concentrations uh, which i've done which is where where when i've been awake i've been able to shift my awareness from me to an object who was looking yeah. back at me looking at it yeah. so we can shift our awareness anywhere we want consciously when you know how to or when you're asleep it happens naturally when, when your awareness shifts it's like switching off a light here and switching it on somewhere else so we are in multiple places at, 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 at any given time, but time is not a static, it is a fluid. It is, in, in my opinion, aligned and connected to emotions. You know, if we're having a great time, time goes fast. If we're having a really boring time, it goes very slow. It's connected to emotions. It is a fluid. It is something that is a perception. Yes. Yes, that's what they told me. One of the one of the other things was um, once I'd done that, I was sitting on the couch one day with a, uh, another friend of mine. It was daytime. The front door was open. It was a glass door. And that same location where these beings came in, where the being came in, other beings had been coming in, and they, they walked past the glass door in daytime. We both saw them walk past us. We were in a bit of a state of, oh, geez, what did, what, what did we just experience? and they cast a shadow as they walked past the door. 
So yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've been yeah. I mean, I've I've been walking through forest in 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 the daytime, as well as dusk. And as I've been walking through the trees, I've seen shadow people walking through the trees yeah. in the opposite direction, passing me. You know that we are. Some sometimes you know when you walk in through a neighbourhood, and you you look at a window of a house. Sometimes the curtains are open and you can see into that house. And the people in that house can see out. We are doing the same in terms of dimensions. Sometimes we catch a glimpse of the things that are always around us in a different frequency spectrum, in a different pocket of space that has its own laws of physics, its own vibrations, its own frequency, its own existences. But often, because we're so blind and focused on the complex ignorance that, that the physicality is all there is, we don't expand ourselves to the yeah. possibility or the fact that there are multiple existences all around us. And when you align yourself with them, or they purposely align themselves with you, then there is an interaction that takes place. Yeah, and oh, yes. then some, some, sometimes we are drifting unknowingly into other timelines and other dimensions, and we are what is called a pseudo appearance yeah. so in other words we are appearing as ghosts to other yeah. realities <clears throat> so some of the things that we see that we believe are ghosts in our reality are other dimensionals other dimensions being a pseudo appearance in in this third dimensional world yes isn't that right? resonates with me that absolutely resonates yeah, yeah isn't I... that creepy too <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I, I have um, I have seen myself looking through the eyes of another vessel. You know, you know, um, I've had a shamanic journey where they showed me where I could be any kind of creature, predator and prey. It was the life cycle journey that they gave me through the eyes of each of these individual beings. And it was like an imprint and it was showing me that each individual being also had access to these other dimensions now i just wanted to quickly say you was you were saying earlier about um in and out of different uh different dimensions and they're not the same i can say that i've got uh reoccurring dimensions that i go in and out of and i recognize them through the different abilities basically i call them frequencies mm. when i get there i have a certain awareness of what my capabilities are so yeah you're operating under a different law of physics which is theirs uh when they come into ours you know because they are they they work under different laws of physics it appears like they're absolutely obliterating our laws of physics as we understand them but each dimension has its different laws different rules you know yes. i have also caught myself my my higher self looking through my own eyes into this world uh, and, and i knew what was happening and, and again as you said i've actually looked through other people's eyes at me looking at them yep. so i know that it can consciously be done and and i really have a saying that the paranormal is normal the supernatural is natural yeah uh, that there's nothing we, we see it as a phenomena because we don't understand it but it's not a phenomena it is completely natural it is completely normal uh, and when we start again rising ourselves, there will be more and more and more interactions of this kind. There's so many different things that that happen uh, that can't be explained within this world, within within the laws of this world. So you have to then start looking what else is doing them, what else is coming into to our space. You know, and and we've all had our own experiences again to evidence that. There's lots and lots of things that are coming in and, and co in, you know, coexisting with us all the time. Oh yes, yeah, definitely. I was gonna, I was gonna mention like, uh, you know, when you shut your lights off in your room, uh, you get those black blobs of uh, of things uh, moving around in the dark, which is darker than the dark. Now, would that be like coexisting with us here in? this dimension or is that like a uh, crossover 
uh, from another dimension to where these beings are coming in? Or are they like interdimensional to where they exist in both planes at the same time and they're just transiting back and forth, kind of like Bigfoot, right? Yeah. Yes. Well, when you know, when, when you look at the likes of Loch Ness and, and, and these phenomenons, Ogo, Pogo, they're, they're, like, they're, yeah. they're basically river guardians mm -hmm. and they are dimensional travelers. So mm -hmm. sometimes if you're at Loch Ness, you know, you're either fortunate or unfortunate enough to bump into the Loch Ness monster, which is really not there to harm you. It is a river guardian. And there's many different cultures that have actually drew and recorded these river guardians who are in the two worlds. And there's a, there's a lot of sort of hinting in, in ancient monuments, such as the Great Pyramid, which has a double chevron above its entrance. Mm -hmm. The double chevron means where the two worlds meet. So there's a lot of interaction between different worlds and this one. And there are those with the ability to become in and out. I mean, I've done it. I've come in and out of different places. You know, I've been to different places. So if I can you do it. You murder like that. Well, well yes. Yeah, but, but it was like, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. So if I can do it, sometimes without trying, I don't have any more abilities than anybody else. I don't have access to places that other people don't have also have access to. It's just that some people pursue it and activate it through self-awareness and self-activation mm -hmm. and other people remain shut down. That is the only difference. Yes, and and if, if you, if you, Again, make the effort if you if you put the work in, if you expand yourself, if you initiate yourself, if you allow these things to come in, if you have an understanding that these things exist, you know, and if you are indoctrinated by a particular religion, you can never advance mm -hmm. because you are shoved into a box. That is the truth. That is the whole truth. That is nothing but the truth, and you will yeah. never expand. But if we have different information, we have different things that come to you. That expands your mind, that expands your vessel, that expands your reactivated capabilities. Mm -hmm. and that is the Beautiful. only difference. Some people do it and some people don't. It's like all things, right? When you practice, you just get better. right? And then if you don't practice, then you don't get better. Nothing will happen, right? You remain uh, stagnant, right? And, uh, and that's it. Yeah. <laughs> if, if, but, uh, if, you send, if you were to send me a drum kit for the post, and I set up the drum kit that you sent me in my room here. I would have to practice for a long time every day to become proficient in, in that art. The same mm -hmm. with the guitar, trombone, anything. Yeah. You have to work. You have to work at it, you know, in, in order. I mean, I mean, technically, you can go to a timeline where you've already mastered it and don't have to do it. Mm -hmm. But until you got to that stage, you know, you have to put in the hours, you have to put in the effort in order yeah. to learn that's, and, right. and that's really what we need to do that's kind of where we're uh, screwed here right now too hey eh, mike because uh, nobody wants to work hard right everybody wants the lazy way out they just want the quick you know quick and easy and uh and that's it and uh, especially with uh this new generation coming up they all want to remotely work from home and don't want to come in to the office to uh to yeah. work and uh you know we got 155,000 people here in canada that just gone on strike because uh, they want to work from home <laughs> yeah so they can watch yeah. the reruns of the view in the morning <laughs> no, that, that, that's right and, and it's, it's like we're saying you know <clears throat> they can no longer be allowed to hold people back yes right <clears throat> they, no, they yeah. no longer can be held keep keeping people in 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 a false vibratory matrix that those who are, who are aware of it no longer wish to be in and they wish to step out of that and those yeah. people cannot be held back anymore <clears throat> so if those people you know want to go and watch a rerun of cheers or, or whatever it is they want to watch that's their reality it's not mine and i don't want to be a part of that. It, <clears throat> <You know? laughs> i don't want to pay for it though right my tax dollars man <laughs> But it, it's all it's all deliberate isn't it you know you, you have yeah. the, the task you have the task masters which are basically those who, who set the task and those who commit us to hard labor and mm -hmm. and task and tax are synonymous so they're really tax masters and everything that happens in the world happens to keep you in the false vibratory matrix every That's single right. thing that you see 
yeah, and when you begin it. to see it, that's when you begin to make moves to step out of it. That's when you become a blasphemous. <clears throat> if that's when you begin to, you know, you become a blasphemous and you wear that badge of honor. And if you guys don't know what a blasphemous is, uh, Mike, please, uh, <laughs> you know, raise some awareness <laughs> on that because I'm a blasphemous. I love being a blasphemous. So I'm I get so a much. jacket that says, you know, big fucking blasphemous on the back of it. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, I'm a conspiracy theorist, as I've already said, because I'm in sync with, with the divine breath. <clears throat> but in, in ancient times, trees were, were very significant. You know, you had the battle of the trees. You, you had different things. You have the bark, the branches, and the roots of a tree. Now, the roots of the tree symbolize the unseen, the secret knowledge, because it's underground. You can't see it. Now, originally, the, the, the ancient symbols were carved on the barks of trees, which was called liber, which is where we get the word library or book. So they used to carve these these symbols and, and cowards to each other on the barks of trees. But the root of the trees, because it's the unseen, because underground is secret knowledge. Now, the word blaspheme or blasphemer means to uproot. So if you are exposing secret knowledge and you are bringing it into a public arena, then you are uprooting that secret knowledge. You are a blasphemer. So instead of being a negative connotation, blasphemy is actually a positive one. But again, in the same vein as conspiracy theory, she's actually positive. And the biggest ever conspiracy theory is Jesus Christ, because Jesus means divine breath. Mm -hmm. And conspiracy means to breathe as one. And Jesus, we are told, is, is the bridge between man and God, which is the divine circulation of breath. So Jesus is the biggest conspiracy uh, theory. So... That is really what a blasphemer is. It, it's to uproot what is unseen into the seen world. A badge of honor that is. And uh, now we're, we're very, very proudly because uh, it's one of the best things that I've actually learned uh, in my life. Now, Mike, uh, before I let you go, let me uh, hit you up with this uh, final question. And uh, is coming in from our brother from another mother, Rockers, Los Angeles. And uh, this is an interesting question. And uh, I'd like to hear your thoughts on it. It says, uh, some believe advanced souls take highest <clears throat> roles in satanic cults in service to source. The tension this time is in their service to betray source master in spite of previous ascension. Your thoughts. Right. Everything that is in creation has been deliberately created. So the one becomes the two. The duality, as it was mentioned by the previous talker, became becomes the time of separation. So the one is the unity, which is symbolized by all the towers around the world. The number one, the unity, the time before separation, and the duality, the number two, is the time of separation but everything was created for a reason duality exists because without duality we have no way of measuring anything we can't we can't measure ourselves and our progress if i'd say today i feel really really well i feel a top on health how could i possibly make that comment if i've never felt ill and unwell <clears throat> so the duality gives me that that comparison what duality also gives us is a means to attain balance. Because without duality, without the 50-50 complementary halves, you can never reach a state of balance, which is what you need to return back to the number one, to the original essence. There are multiple things that are playing multiple roles. Some of them are playing it for real. Some of them are so engrossed in that particular role that they've forgotten everything else. Advanced souls have gone through so many experiences of duality, polarity, good, bad, all of these different things. If they intend to betray the source, then they will be dealt with at some point. You know, we, we have lots and lots of things in which the source needs to enable itself to be perfect and we are playing these roles for real in order for it to 
feed back the data back to itself. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you can turn around and say, the people of the planet are who, who you know, the so-called rulers and, and, and elites of the world have advanced sacred knowledge at their disposal, but their actions are in conflict to that knowledge. In the same way, a higher soul may have all of this experience, may have gone through all the different dimensions at different times, but they still have an intent for selfish gain. Mm -hmm. And that, again, it, 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 you have these, these negative vibrations in any dimension anywhere. If you go to the fifth and the sixth and the seventh and the eighth, it doesn't mean to say that you eradicate negativity. You don't. You need the, difference to have being, the difference being in these different dimensions is that, that it has less effect on you. Mm -hmm. So everyone is playing a role. We all are here for a purpose. And eventually, regardless of, of what side, you know, whether you're the blues or the reds, you know, at some point, we all go back into the same washing machine. Mm -hmm. You need to have the, uh, the negative in order to uh, see the positive, because then how can we differentiate between the positive and the negative? If there was no negative, because then everything would be, we wouldn't know, right? Same thing with hate and love. You need to experience hate in order to understand love. You do, and, and again, if, if you know, if, if we look at the Bible and what it's saying, I mean, this this really is, is a contradiction. But when it says that, you know, on the fourth day God created light, well, for one, if it was He created light, it wasn't the fourth day; it must have been the first day. But nevertheless, <laughs> if God created the light, then God must have been standing in a place of dark. It so, why, why does the New Age tell me to avoid darkness in my pursuit back to God? Because mm -hmm. that's where God created visible light from the dark. Mm -hmm. So the creator is both what we deem to be dark and light because it created it. Mm -hmm. And you cannot, you cannot measure progress and you cannot attain balance without two complementary halves that are yes. always in simultaneous existence. One is manifest, one is unmanifest. Life is manifest, physical death is unmanifest, but at some point they trade places. And then when they trade places again, you have that thing called reincarnation. Mm -hmm. but, but the seen and the unseen will always be in simultaneous existence for eternity. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you very much, my brother. I uh, appreciate you. And uh, thank you for uh, taking the time on your evening on this Earth Day to come and uh, share your knowledge and wisdom with us. Help us raise our awareness and uh, lift a little bit of ignorance so that uh, we can be uh, better people tomorrow. So before I let you go, Mike, you've got a new series that is uh, on Iconic TV. So why don't you quickly give us a download on that and uh, maybe after you're done, you can shoot me a link and then I'll post that link in the comments so uh, you know other people can go and check that out. So here you go, brother. Yeah, I mean, how we came about really is Iconic did some market research with their subscribers and, and, and basically said, what do you want to see on the channel? And the large majority said ancient codes, ancient symbols. So uh, they got in touch with me and asked me to fill that space for them. So a couple of weeks ago, I went to the studios and did uh, a full length presentation for them, which was going to be an introduction to the new series, which is going to start in June. Now, the, the plan for that is going to be called The Secret of Secrets. There's going to be four prongs to it. There's going to be studio work with just me in front of the camera. There's going to be on location. There's going to be the possibility occasionally of having guests. And then there's also going to be further presentations on the show as well, which is, is going to lead to, to, to different things. So that that's the secret of secrets, which will be starting on, on Iconic Channel in June. And it should be uh, a weekly show. It's probably going to be 30, 40 minutes at a time. Uh, there's also other things that they want me to be involved in as well. There's also other things that other people have, have, have approached me to do for them also. So, you know, the, the more and more and more people are beginning to want to know, are beginning to, you know, seek answers to their questions. And every question has a vibration, which has a compatible vibratory answer. So if you start asking high vibrational questions, you're going to get our high vibrational answers. And that high vibration is coming into your body and it is lifting you. So knowledge and wisdom in the kingdom of God, 
the king the dome of god in the wise dome the galgotha the place of skulls so again you know there's there's, there's going to be a lot of things that i'm being involved in uh, which are in the planning stages at the moment but again thank you for for, for this platform to be able to to speak uh to, to to your people thank you thanks brother i really appreciate you and uh guys go and uh check out uh michael's website to michael-feely.com thank you to ronnie for uh posting that and uh as well michael's got a uh, pretty good youtube channel as well under the uh, same name at michael feely go and uh subscribe to that and uh check out uh the good stuff mike's got on there because it's uh it's really good stuff and mike you got any uh new books coming out because i knew you were working on that serious book uh so uh anything new children's books because i know you were working on children's books yeah. as well how's all yeah. that coming along it, it, it is it, it's all coming along well I'm, I'm i'm writing at the moment uh a book called the lost word of god mm -hmm. and so that that's that's going to be interesting because it, it's, it's a, a particular word that many secret societies are looking for and when that word is revealed it will be of benefit to humanity now i've uh, i've located that word i know what that word is so i'm writing a book called the lost word of god which will obviously tell everybody what that is and it, it will help them to move forward that is close to completion but then it's obviously got to be edited and published and different things so uh yeah it's one to look out for because it's, it's, it's probably it's going to leave everything else that i've done behind in all fairness so i'm, I'm looking forward to, to, to that being complete and, it, and it's a sacred word that a lot of people want right on let me know because i need to re-up my books from you and uh definitely want to get that and then i think i know what the word is michael it is om r <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> basically alchemy but you never right. know. there we go there we go <laughs> thank you my brother i appreciate you and uh everybody appreciates you everybody loves you and uh you know I, I thank you you know i i can't say enough uh thank you give my love to your family and uh you know be well be happy and uh, let's connect again and uh, do a one one talk because it's been uh it's been some time now a few months so uh, mm -hmm. let's connect, uh, you know, coming up here in May. And then, uh, yeah, cool, my brother. Thank you. Anytime. Have a fantastic day. And thank you, everyone. You as well.